On phase one of this project, we took a pretty plain generic powder horn, uh, something I probably bought, you know, five years ago, six years ago for 15 bucks, and uh, reshaped the outside and brought it to this configuration now, where it's starting to look a little bit more like a custom powder horn. So now it's time to take it to the next level and do some embellishment. Well, I've decided to try scrimshaw or scrim shanding on the horn, and I'm far from artistic, so this could be a complete disaster. But uh, what I just did is put my name on here. I just penciled it in, and I did it all freehand. And now I'm taking a carving knife, and I am just cutting those lines in. All right, I just did a little test run on the M. I carved it and I inked it. And I gotta tell you, a lesson learned is don't make any overruns at all. Uh, I made a couple and I had to scrape the whole thing out and start over again because any overrun that ink's gonna get into and it's gonna show up like you wouldn't believe. But, uh, and you can see that the ink just gets into every little crevice. So, anyway, but the M is, is in and now I'll start doing the rest of it. Okay, you know, kind of a lesson learned from this is it feels like you're not carving deep enough or wide enough for this to show up. But believe me, every little scratch shows. So you're really, you're carving deeper than you feel like you are. So it's kind of, don't worry about it. It is going to be fine. Just stay inside your lines at all costs and everything's gonna work out okay at least I gotta believe that. I've got my name scratched in and I don't know how well you can see this but I think well enough I've got a significant overrun here and I've got another one here and I've had them all the way along and I'll tell you what the lightest touch will make a line of a depth that you would not believe in this horn so, what I'm going to have to do now is grab the scraper and scrape those out uh, before this gets inked because they will all fill in with ink. Well, I've got my first two lines of text in. M. Bellevue, his horn. A couple of stars on the end of that. And now I'm putting a border around the plug. And uh, <laughs> that's a little bit harder to get a good circle with the way this horn moves around than I expected it to be. So this is not coming out as, as pristine as I had hoped, but it's the same thing. I'm just cutting it in and uh, I'll probably put a little more detail in it after I get the basic outline cut. Well, for the next step, I'm going to put a flare de lis on the front of the horn. And you got to forgive me, I've got a cold so my voice is gone. So I went on the internet and I found uh, a decent flare de lis and printed it out and I've got carbon paper taped behind it. I've taped it to the horn and now I'm going to trace over it and the carbon should leave the imprint that I can carve later. So I'm just going to carefully trace the flare. here onto my horn and when it's all traced I'll pull this off and have an image I can carve. Alright so with the carbon paper off here's what it looks like transferred over came out pretty good so now I can get the carbon. Well there's the fleur de lis all carved in now I've got to come up with something to kind of fill in the space over here I'm gonna have to give that a little bit of thought. Okay I am done with all of the scrimshaw now I put uh, just a couple of little scrolls around the flare de lis and that's all I'm going to do because uh, I'm right at the ragged edge of my competence. So now I'm going to ink the designs and what I'm using is this refill ink for ink pads. It's water-based India ink. I picked it up at Staples and I'm just going to dab it on.
All right, I wiped off the excess ink with a wet cloth. And of course now the horn looks like total crap. And every mess up that I made shows up like, well, you know what, in church. So every scratch, you can see particularly egregious ones here and here, here. So now I'm going to try to fix as much of that as I can and buff things out, recut them, and um, try to get this as close to being good as, as I can do it. Some of it's never going to get any better, and that's, that's okay. Uh, but we'll just get it all cleaned up to the extent I can. Well, the Sibley book is uh, noticeably silent on how to fix your mistakes. So I guess they just don't make any. But I made plenty of them. It's pretty hard to control the knife and not get overruns. So since the Sibley book didn't tell me how to fix them, I'm just trying to figure it out on my own. So what I've done is I've filed out uh, my most egregious overruns. And now I'm going to go through and, and cut the lines deeper where I've filed uh, and hope I don't make any more overruns. And then I think we'll be pretty much good. I'll be able to clean the horn up. Well, I've inked everything and uh, wiped the ink off. And as you can see, the horn looks awful. So I'm going to take some, uh, some 600 grit emery cloth and I'm just going to go over the whole thing and try to get it back to a semblance of being white. Alright, 600 grit paper did nothing for it. It's just making it worse, really. So, what's working is scraping it. So I'm going to scrape the whole horn down again. And, uh, and then I'm going to recut my lines a little bit deeper. And i had been planning on leaving this horn in the white, but white is just not going to work out for it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to color this horn. So the, the dye I've got in the lines, uh, and then when I deepen it, the coloring dye will get in there and darken it a little bit more. And hopefully everything will look okay when it's all said and done. At least I got to believe that. Well, I scraped everything down and then I went over it with 600 grit sandpaper and um, you know it's not looking as bad as it was looking but it is what it is. I'm now going over it with fluoro steel wool and I'm going to give it its final polish with that and the next step is going to be to dye it. I think we're going to go a little yellow. Well, here we are on the subject of lessons learned again. This color, which is just a little bit more orange than a pumpkin, is the result of a full bottle, I mean a full bottle, of writ lemon yellow dye, as yellow as you can get, and one tablespoon of orange dye. The bottle's just about still full. And that one tablespoon totally trumped that whole bottle of yellow dye. So what I'm doing right now is I am going over the horn with 4 rot steel wool. And I'll show you. I'm cutting that orange back. And I'm going to make it more of a mottled color. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. As it turned out, 4 rod steel wool is just not sufficient to cut this stuff. So I'm, I'm using 400 grit sandpaper. And I'm cutting off as much of this dye as I can. And uh, after I've got it off, I'm going to dye it just straight yellow. Now I'll still have some, I'm going to have orange highlights in it, but that'll be okay, I think. We'll see how it looks when, uh, when it's done. But I'm going to go over it with 400 grit, then 600 grit. And hopefully, by the time all that's done, I'll have it pretty clean. I'll be able to dye it again. So, in the meantime, remember the great pumpkin. 
and we're getting it a little bit back to white and it's a ton of work well after an hour and a half of hard work scraping and sanding I'm almost back to square one and I'm gonna dye it again yellow no orange alright so for the second dye job I made up a weak solution of yellow maybe a quarter of a bottle in the same amount of water I used last time and I added about a half a teaspoon of tan dye and about four drops of orange and this is the result and actually when you see the final result it's not going to be this yellow because I cut it down with steel wool uh, after I took this picture so it's a little bit more subdued but still on the whole uh, better than that screaming orange well this horn had a very odd strap attachment in the back it had kind of an acorn shaped finial I've already cut the top of it off uh, and it's threaded and the idea is that it would, of course, screw in, screw out, and that it would be easier to fill the horn from here than from that little hole there. Uh, so, I mean, good idea, but not, not well executed. This is really a soft wood, and the threads just kind of wear out. So what I'm going to do is I am going to glue up the threads. And I'm just going to use some... Uh, wood glue here like Elmer's this is more of a carpenter's type of glue but I'm just gonna get uh, get a bit on here you know make a mess and I'm gonna send this just send this in See, with all the, the staining I've done and the dye baths this thing has been through, the wood kind of swollen up even. It doesn't even really want to screw in that well. So, I'm going to get this all the way in. And uh, I'm just going to let everything set up. I think that's as good as that's going to get. I'm going to let everything set up. And then I'm going to actually cut this off. And I'm going to put in a traditional uh, staple um, type of attachment. Now, the original stopper for this horn is made out of the same kind of crazy wood as that back plug. And uh, yeah, it's just not really in keeping with the style of the horn now, for one thing. I'm just not crazy about it. So, I picked up a fiddle peg. And I'm going to cut it down to the length of the stopper. Uh, but the fiddle bag peg is quite a bit thicker than the original stopper. So I'm going to open up the opening a little bit and then work the peg and kind of make them both fit. Um, so first thing, cut the peg down. Right now I'm, I'm working on the horn with a rat tail file. And uh, what I'm trying to do is not only make it bigger, but I'm trying to do it at a taper. But I'm also trying to change the angle of it a little bit. Because it was going too much this way. And I want it to go more this way. Uh, so I'm just going to open it up a bit. I've got a lot to work with on this side which is exactly where I want to take stuff off. Well, to attach the strap, I made a staple out of 1 16th inch uh, drill rod, which, by the way, is handy stuff to have around the shop for just a lot of things. So I marked the spot where I'm going to put it, and I'm drilling a hole. I've got masking tape to make a drill stop because I don't want it to go in too far. I need to have room to slide the strap in so let's see how we're doing I think 
that that is going to work just fine. So, basically, the horn is done.